Hello everybody, this is Dago Seda bringing you another update of my Resident Evil Chris Hard Mode walkthrough. Bam. Okay. Yeah, last video I kind of wasn't really paying attention to most of what I was saying or doing. I feel like I've said before in the past that, yeah, I'm usually more awake and stuff when I'm tired or something, something like that. I say, like, oh, my commentary is always so much better when I'm tired. Yeah. So, it's at the point where I was so tired, it doesn't even, like, benefit me at all. In fact, it actually probably made it worse. But, I, I, I apologize in, um, yeah, so you'll probably be watching this after the last part. So, yeah, I apolog apologize for any, uh, bizarre thing I may have said that may have thrown you off. Actually, you know, I kind of think of it, it probably wasn't that bad. But, okay. So, we're going in here armed with the other, um gem the yellow one now usually the way I do this I I slightly changed my route going about the mansion in the second run through to like a, a way that I don't walk by the blue gem on my way over here so yeah if you put the blue gem in the other eye you get shotgun shells and I actually didn't need the shotgun shells but just let you know it's an option, so you can do that if you want some shotgun shells. And on hard mode, you might want some more. I mean, I, I said I don't really use the shotgun very much, except for when I kill stuff. Okay, yeah, I, I'm lying. I use the shotgun all the time. But I didn't use it enough that I ran out of ammo at any point in the game, and I had myself swimming in shotgun shells by the end of the game here and I am so glad that didn't hit me that would have really sucked yeah okay so for some reason I'm kinda confused that two hunters jumped out of the window and only one of them was left alright so that MO disc we just picked up we're not gonna use it until we get to the second disc of this game and we need to find two more of them but the other two are both on disc two yeah, those of you playing the home game, there's two discs to this game, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of li like that thing, though. It, it makes you think, like, wow, they actually put enough content in this game that they couldn't even fit it onto one disc. Like, uh, fi Final Fantasy XIII, that game has, like, freaking three discs. I'm like, whoa! Yeah, so... Here, here's probably the fastest way to do this. You go through this door here, which has been locked for the longest period of time. And hello, Crimson Head. You know, remember earlier when we walked through here to get the uh, armor key and the Crimson Head stood up? Well, he's chilling over there now. So I figured he's too stupid to leave that little hallway. Might as well, like, you know, grab some stuff here. And we bats to go fight a boss. And hey, look, the Crimson Head's going to kill me. Not really. Yeah, that crimson head is like not our problem. And that's pretty much other than Coffin Henry, the only Crimson Head that you can't avoid. But really he's not that much of a problem and you only really have to walk by him twice. And the first time it's just him getting up and not being threatening and then he like disappears to another place in that hall. So I don't know. You know, I think it's really clever when uh Games sort of designed things not to hit you, but you find somehow find a way to get hit by them anyway, and it's not like stupid. It's just like because your fault you get hit by it. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but well, I can probably say well, whatever. I'll, I'll talk about it in a second. All right, so this is remember that giant snake from earlier. Well, this is him. His name is Yawn. He's kind of a jerk. Um, I guess I'm, I'm just going to be healing during this. Takes approximately, uh, 20, so, somewhere around 25 shots to kill him with the handgun. And I don't know how I keep getting hit by this. And another thing, I don't know how I keep surviving. Like, this is probably the hardest boss fight in the game. I mean, it's not that hard. But it's still kind of annoying, and he just surprises me back there. Like, whoa, I was expecting you to be over there. Just basically, um, get far away from him. Keep shooting him until he starts catching up to you. And then, 
keep keep repeating that process until he drops. You know, I should really change the settings on my computer to, uh, in terms of the time it takes for, uh, you know, to go black when I'm not doing anything. Actually, I don't think I can change that. I can change the screensaver time, which I think I set that to be a pretty high up number. But, I don't know. It's really annoying when my computer screen always goes black when I'm doing commentary, because I always like, forget, like, oh, I should be moving my mouse. Yeah, e either way, this is probably going to be the last time we're actually going to use the handgun in the game, because, you know. Yeah, the handgun's kind of not very useful. I think I used it twice. Like, the last time I used it was probably, uh, when I had to kill those dogs. If you remember, as, as you can see, um, when he's dying, he kind of starts, like, dragging blood with his tail. So, it's a sure, surefire sign of him being dead. Yeah, also, you, you can shoot at his tail. I think it, it probably does less damage. But he also moves much more slowly in this situation, so I'm just going to keep... Keep shooting him until he dies. Shoot the tail. Shoot the tail. Oh. Okay, I guess I'm not shooting the tail. Bam. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah, I'm just, like, waiting for that situation, like, last time, where he kind of snuck up at me. and am like, I didn't want him to do that. Just keep shooting, just keep shooting, just keep shooting, just keep shooting. Bam. And then he sort of teleports to in front of the bookcase. And then he knocks some books over. But he's dead now. Hooray. Hooray. Yawn is dead. Alright, so let's pick up our reward. Yeah. Rewards are good. Here is last book, volume two. I think that's hilarious. It's like, oh, this is the last book. Second volume. Because in the original game, they were called the Doom Books, which I actually didn't know that until I basically saw it in NARP's Let's Play of the original game. But, yeah, one of these days I'll beat the original game and I'll actually know what's going on. But, Doom Books, they said, hey, let's change it to Last Book. But there's two of them. There, people are going to be confused. Like, why is there a second Last Book? And then, you know. And then that'll probably be like the stupid intern who asked that question, and they'll get fired. And it'll be so funny. <laughs> anyway, what I was thinking about before that boss fight interrupted me, I thought of this when I was playing uh, Toho 11, or felt like one of the bosses attacks. I'm like, wow, this is almost like this is designed not to hit me. But then again, you'll be looking at it and you'll think, crap, this is going to hit me. So. You'll try to dodge it anyway, but what ends up happening is you end up screwing yourself up because you were just fine standing right there, you know what I mean? So it's it's an interesting tactic that uh, game makers can put in, can do when they're making their games. You know, I've, I, I'm fond of that tactic very much, and it's it throws you off guard, and it's just fun, you know? You know, I like fun. fun. Yeah, and speaking of the Toho games, um, I finally managed to actually beat one of those. I usually suck at them. I beat two of them, actually. I beat uh, the fourth one and the seventh one. Yeah, there's 13, by the way. It's numerous spinoffs. Okay, so that hallway right there that we just came out of, I don't, I'm not entirely sure what triggers it, but if you do the things in a certain order, I think it's like... You kill Yawn first and then come outside or something like that. You can trigger a red hunter coming out of the door. Now the red hunter is looks kind of like the poison hunters in Code Veronica, except it doesn't actually do anything. It's just red, and it's kind of startling. I mean, I I've only tr actually managed to trigger it once or twice, so you can imagine the shock and. In my expression when oh wow I dodged that yeah there we go I was about to successfully dodge those zombies once you can imagine the complete and utter shock I was in the first time I saw them. I'm like holy crap that's a hunter and I really wasn't expecting the hunter to come out so that really hurt my feelings a lot uh, 
you know, it takes a lot to hurt my feelings. Yeah, what feelings? Well, you know, that's sort of my default thing to go to when I'm making fun of stuff. Like, I can... If I'm ever doing an imitation of someone that I'm mocking, it almost always ends with... And then... Like, say I'm making fun of someone named John. It'll be... I'm John. I always end. I always end it exactly like that, you know. Okay, so there's only one more door left to open with the uh, helmet key. So, get really excited for that, guys. This is gonna be. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. You know, the moment where stuff happens and uh, yeah, stuff happens. All right. So, first thing you may have noticed is uh, if you read Wesker's note out in the the shed. He said, hey, I fixed the door. So we can go through the store uh, as many times as we want. Last time, since it was broken, we can only go through it twice before it breaks. But now, we can use that door as much as we want. Yeah, let's finally go into this room. You were probably wondering, hey, what what the heck's in here? Anyway, turn on that switch. We're going to pick up a couple things in here. First of all, they keep shotgun shells in their drawer. Clever. And more importantly, we need to get the uh, stone object, or metal object, yeah, the metal object. As I, as I went to this huge ex unnecessary explanation earlier, um, there's two stone and metal objects. The second one, you have to collect the stone object and the metal object. Combine them together to get the next stone and metal object. Alright, and hey, look, a car's driving down the road. I am so always distracted. Anyway, so what we're doing right now is kind of important. I mean... In the long run, all it really probably does is let you avoid part of the end of the game not doing it. But for completion's sake, um, I'm deciding to go all out and just do it anyway. So, so just saying, guys, this is completely optional, but at the same time, I'd also say it's highly recommended. Like, I'd definitely do this if I were you guys, you know? You know, you know what I'm saying? Alright, so in this room you see uh, Rebecca about to get murdered by a hunter. Hooray, not really. I actually like Rebecca. Anyway, so you're going to kill that hunter. And also stab it, or do something to it. What did I do? I stabbed it, right? Yeah. Just kill that hunter, kill it dead. And you saved Rebecca. And that Basically, if you didn't save Rebecca, you can't fight the final boss. So saving Rebecca is not an option if you want to fight the final boss. I'm not going to really say what it is for people who don't want spoilers. But yeah, save Rebecca, okay? That's the one person you do save. And yeah. Alright guys, I'll see you next time with uh... We'll finish up this wretched mansion. Alright guys, I'll see you next time.